Well, hey guys, welcome back to Verified Podcast. We are super excited that you are joining us We are super excited to have Pastor Brett yeah. on camera. Yeah. Hello. Woo. Yeah. We never get that. No. Yeah. To what do we I, owe this honor? I don't usually like to be on the podcast. To be on, I like being behind the camera because no one can see me. Why do you not like being <clears> seen? Hmm. <throat> Cause I don't know, I don't, know. I don't, I don't like being seen. Is my mic cutting in and out? Just a little bit. Check, check, check. I'll be louder. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, I'm happy to be here because we're talking about worship. 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 Yeah. Super excited for that. So I'm joined again by Heather, Pastor Brett, and uh, we are discussing worship and the heart of worship and the necessity of worship and worship from the Bible. Awesome. So yeah. Brett, you yeah, are, right. a, you are a worship pastor. You are a pro worshiper. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if there's a such thing as a pro worshiper. Is there? Probably not. No, I'm not a pro worshiper, but I love to worship. Yeah, yeah. and that's actually yeah. why we have you on the podcast because this is a huge passion of yours. Yeah. Yes, it always has been. Yeah. So I know you got a favorite passage that you teach this out of. So. So you want me to start? Yeah, I mean, that, go into be, it? let's just go into it. Wow. Yeah. That was fast. Um, do you want me to restart the podcast? We can go, we can go one, two, three, <laughs> do no. it all over again. No, it's fine. I just thought there's going to be some like announcements or like things going on, you know, but this is fine. No, we do you can, want us to make an announcement real quick? That is a there good go. segue for our yeah. plug. <laughs> we are reading the month of June, Mere Christianity by yeah. C.S. Lewis, the same guy who wrote Chronicles of Narnia. Now, that's a great series too, which we will probably cover on our podcast at some point. Yeah. I love that series. That but so his good. book, Mere Christianity, is amazing. So Very powerful. Good. As he talks about the necessity, at least what I've read right now, for the God of Christianity. Yes. First book of it. Oh, man. And I, I did say book of it correctly. It's divided into three books. Is that right. correct? I think that's right. With chapters within each one of it. Reminded and uh, it is a mesmerizing read. If you're daunted about reading books, don't worry about this one. You start to read it, and it just hooks you. Yes. So good. It is so, so good. Very good. And I ordered this copy on Amazon You guys for have matching books. We do. I think that's mine's cool. actually, oh, no, they are the same. They're the same. I are. thought mine was yeah. special. Okay. Nope. You can also find it on Hoopla for free and listen <laughs> to true. it or read it there. So there's That's our true. announcement for the day. Yeah. It does have an audiobook on Hoopla? It does. Oh, yeah. sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. I think there's a couple different options, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. Of, of, like, different uh, people that are reading it? Probably. You know? I didn't oh, look well. into it. Just get one with a British narrator. Oh, yeah. And you're yeah. set. I love that right? book. I love about British. Roy Hessian's yeah. book, The British Narrator. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. That was good. Mm. British that people. That was good. <laughs> I mean voices. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I mean, I don't know what I'm saying. The I just, accent. The British, it sounds yeah, smart. The accents. This yeah, is why we. Do, this is actually listening. why we don't let Brett on the camera. <laughs> but it's we have you here today, Brett. I say the dumbest things when I'm on camera. No, you say the best yeah. things. It's actually no, my I favorite. Know, I don't know. I love I'm, having you on the podcast. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So you actually have a passage though that you love to well, teach us out. Yeah. <clears throat> can I can I preface with a couple things? Absolutely. I, yes. I, I have multiple pa passages that I really love when it comes to worship. Um, but I want to ask you what kind of worship, because when we, when we talk about worship, it can be such a broad topic, right? So when we first see worship in the Bible, it's actually talking about when Abraham says in Genesis, he says, me yes. and the ladder going up to worship. And he's talking about actually sacrificing Isaac to, yes. to the Lord. And, um, and so sacrifice mm -hmm. is, is a way of worshiping to the Lord. I think, yeah. um, prayer is a way of worship to the Lord, you know? So I, I guess really, I, I think it's good for the viewers or everyone listening for us to be able to say, well, what kind of worship are we actually talking about? Are we talking about singing? Are we talking about, you know, like, um, more of the broad of sacrifice, you know, what, what do yeah. you guys kind of have in mind? Yeah. I'm blue that are Bibling a passage that you made me think of. Nice. Yeah. Singing is what automatically comes singing. to my mind. Yeah, I think a lot of people, yeah. First, think about singing. Like yeah. when they think of worship, they think, "Yeah, we're in a church and I'm drinking my coffee and singing a song." Yeah. Right. I think of <laughs> yeah. I think of singing, but then I've also heard teaching that your whole life should be an act of worship. Yeah. So it should heard point that. back to God. I guess it comes down to what is the definition of worship. Mm -hmm. Well, I there's a oh, go ahead. I think it is interesting in the Old Testament that when you think of worship, you think of sacrifice. You know, right. you think of animals sure. being offered on the right. altar, and it was worship to the Lord. In fact, yeah. it's probably interesting. You may know this better than me, Brett. It feels like the transition really in singing worship was when David was setting up the singers 
or the mm. temple, like Asaph and all that, at least as far as I can think, I can't think of any other point. You know, I, I can think of people worshiping God, singing to yeah, God, yeah. Israel right. worshiping God when they were delivered, but sure. that's when David was like, we're going to have musicians Set constantly up. playing worship right. True. before yeah. the Lord that's in the temple. That's probably the first time I remember. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because like you said, I mean, they're, they're coming out of Egypt and they sing that song. That's probably the first song we yeah. see that's what I'm looking yeah. of yeah. Israel, actually. Song of Miriam. Yeah, I think it's Exodus, what, like four, five? Maybe. Like no, it's after Exodus. 10 because the 10 is oh, the last yeah, yeah. play. I'm in 15. And 19 is the loss. It's before. It's between 10 and 19. Yeah. I think it's pretty much right away when they get over the, the Red Sea. The Red Sea, they start singing, you know, to the Lord. And um, right. I always wondered, like, how do they all know what to sing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're singing in the spirit already. Like that's what worship is, you know? Yeah. Unless they were singing and that's just the first thing that was recorded. Ooh. Right? Like maybe they had been singing. Maybe it was Tricky. a song that they all knew. Huh. Oh, maybe it was. No, it couldn't have been because no, the horse and the about. rider he threw into the sea. Yeah, they're singing about what happened, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. And then there's the song of Moses, which is in the Psalms that Moses That's wrote. Right. That's right. Yep. Yeah, so there was worship, you could say. There was worship, like, but but again, David yeah. David is the one that really set up yeah. singers and, and musicians and yeah. players to really worship. And it's interesting because you get to the New Testament, and Paul's always talking about singing to the Lord, making melody to the Lord, singing right. with grace in your heart. Right. Talking about praise and thanksgiving, and that's what the church really thinks of when we think of worship. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Okay, so we're sticking to when it comes to worship, singing, singing. making melody, yep. congregationally coming yep. together and singing songs to the Lord. So I think it's got to be all of it, right? So you're saying the the whole broad of making a life of worship, a life of worship, because I think worship still requires sacrifice. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and even when we think about you and I coming to worship God, it's on the foundation of tremendous sacrifice on the part of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. It's the only reason I can really be made right before God and come into his throne unhindered right. because Jesus has made a way through his body, through his blood on the cross. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I, Cody, I mean, oh, go ahead. Heather. Oh, I was just going to say, I looked up a couple definitions and one of them says worship is the res- response of grateful and humble people to the living God where submission, sacrificial service, praise, profession, testimony, it goes on. I hadn't clicked on it, but that, that response, it's a response. Yeah. So singing is a very clearly defined response. Yeah. Right. Or sacrifice is a very clearly defined response. That's good. I, I've always heard, you know, um, there, there's actually a, a few Hebrew words when, when it comes to worship that we see in the Bible, but a big one is proskuneo. Yeah. If I say that right, I hope so. But um, that's right. It's really to lean into the Lord to to like yeah. kiss Him. You know, it's it's so even with our our life of worship is really just this reverence and in like giving and just wanting to lean in and press into the Lord. Yeah. Um, which I think is, I think people really lack the intimacy of worship yeah. in their life. You know, I think I think worship is um, kind of this idea of okay, we are going to come together and just sing songs. You know, some of them I like, some of them I don't. I wish we would sing more hymns or I wish we would sing more right. new songs or what, you know, whatever right. it is. Like people always have their, yeah. their thoughts of different styles and stuff, right. uh, which is fine. That's, that's makes sense. But at the same time, what we forget about is a God um, deserves our worship yeah. and our praise, but B it's a time proskuneo of like positioning in our hearts yeah um, putting us right. in a place of like lord you're holy and i want to be close to you i want to i want to be in a, in an intimate relationship with you you know as um and that's the part of worship that i love because proskuneo right. means to prostrate doesn't it yeah to prostrate to kiss mm-hmm. almost like to kiss his feet right yeah. you know i think it is interesting going back to that idea of sacrifice because mm-hmm. When you and I worship God, we are giving something. And I think that is important to talk about because I, I agree with you, but I think people do lack the intimacy that worship brings in their life. And they lack that sacrifice to the Lord, yeah. if you're being honest, yeah. because it does cost you something, even if it just costs you time. Yeah. Saying, so I'm going to take time just to worship and serve the Lord, love the Lord. That costs you time. 
And in our busy lives, so often we're not willing to make that sacrifice throughout the yeah. week. And then we come on Sunday mornings. And if you guys are like me and you're amped up on Sunday morning and super excited, or maybe you're not, maybe you're super discouraged or whatever, but you come on in and, and whatever's going on in your week or your life is right there in your mind because you're thinking about it. And it's hard to even worship during the Sunday set sometimes. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I think embracing that piece of the sacrifice first is important. Mm-hmm. That worship isn't about me. Right. It's not about what I get out of it. It's about right. what I'm giving and offering to God. I like that picture of sacrifice. It's an offering to God. Yeah. I'm offering my praise to yeah. him. Yeah. And it's okay if it comes at a cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's got to. I, I 100% agree. Yeah. It seems like worship is about involving your emotions and bringing, this is what I was thinking about as you were talking about this, is that when you come to church, it seems like worship is that attempt to bring your entire being into alignment before God, right? Yeah. And to position yeah. yourself before God. Because you think of how our service is set up. We come and we sing and we worship, which engages your heart, engages your emotions. And then we listen to the word, which engages your intellect. Right. And it seems like that whole process is one that orients our entire being towards God, right? right. And being oriented towards God is part of the definition of worship, yeah. right? Even though we think of singing oftentimes as the entirety of it, it's so much more than that. Yeah. Mm. That's a good word. I automatically went to the Psalms because that's just what I think of yeah. when I think of worship. I think of <clears throat> just, you know, the make a joyful noise to the Lord, the worship the Lord, all of those passages. I think just the poetry of it, and of course they were songs, makes me think of worship and and David and all of his different situations it seems like he has a psalm or an expression of the emotions and worship that go with the different situations throughout his life I I think of like Psalms 92 when he says it is good to give thanks to yes. the Lord yeah. yes um, and sing praises to your name almost high to declare your loving kindness in the morning yes. That's what we do on Sundays. You know, we're, we're yep. waking up, we're in the morning, we're, you know, declaring his goodness and we're, we're thankful to the Lord because that's what yeah. worship is about. Like Cody, I just loved what you said that, um, it's not about us, you right. know, and I've heard people say, Oh, worship's so awkward. Like I, I don't have a good voice and I don't know, right. you know, I don't know the songs very well. Right. Like that, that all that stuff doesn't matter because it's, it's, it's from your heart. Like what is your, right. you're coming to the Lord, you're making a sacrifice and prostrate yourself the best that you can, where yeah. you're not distracted by stuff and things and other, yeah. you know, whatever worries of this world and just give to the Lord in that time. And it doesn't yep. just have to be Sundays. I mean, it's like yeah. David was a man that, yeah, he was gifted. Like he was, he could yeah. play the harp like nobody's business. Right. But at the same time, he just loved to worship yeah. the Lord and anyone can have that heart, not just worship leaders. Like it, it shouldn't just be me or, or Justin or whoever's leading worship on stage. Yeah. Like any of us can be worshipers and, and Heather, not to single you out, but out of the three of us, I don't think you play an instrument. Do you a guitar no. or a piano or anything? So what does I have it a hard look time like carrying a tune? <laughs> So what does it look like to you, do you think, like as far as worship in your life? Yeah. Maybe you're not as passionate. Cody and I, we play guitar. We love singing right. and all that kind of stuff. Right. I hear Cody jamming out on the piano before we come for our, our meetings yeah. and stuff. But what does it look yeah. like for you to to worship the Lord, to sing, make melodies, um, you know? Right. That's a good question because I don't find myself to be musically gifted and yet I love worship music and so that's one of my favorite things is to put on worship music yeah. and even if I'm not belting it out because <laughs> that wouldn't be pretty but in my heart <laughs> like, like it's in my heart and I feel it and when I listen to worship music I it does do something within me and it orients me towards God and it makes me love him or it's an expression of love towards him yeah. and of my yeah. need for him um so that's kind of what it looks like and then Part of it is I just don't sing loud because that would probably be distracting and sure. awkward. Yeah. But you can still participate in worship at church. Absolutely. You can still sing. You can still, like, if my husband's standing next to me, that's great because his voice 
gives me something to kind of try to. Yeah, yeah. is so loud. It, yes, and it, I can kind of find something to like a similar pitch. Yeah, let's just try, <laughs> even we're within three notes different. here. <laughs> but it's helpful, and so those are some different things. I mean, I don't really have much of a sense of rhythm, and so I remember in high school. You know, we would clap because I went to a Christian high school mm -hmm. and I would stand next to a friend. This is a little bit random, but I would try to find that person where I could match their clapping. And it just kind of allowed me to join in in a way <laughs> where sure. I wasn't as good at it. And it was humbling, yeah. but I could still participate in it. I'm actually that. glad that you asked that. That's because I know awesome I'm probably Heather. not the only one that is. I'm <laughs> well, just gonna if Brett ever really asks us to clap again, I'm gonna like see and worship if you're looking yeah. at somebody Where's else's Heather? hands the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> she's just, Who is she aligning? With? You're, and you're still a little off. You're like <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. I know. So I, know. I know. Well, Heather, I want I want to press just a little bit okay. more because sorry, Cody, I'm hijacking. But no, go for it. Um, I I understand the fear of singing yeah. out. If you're like, man, I. You know, I don't have yeah. the best voice or whatever. Right. Um, but I think that's the part that the Lord loves is like, yeah, maybe you don't have vulnerable. The, it is yeah. because worship should be yeah. right. And right. And like, Lord, I don't have the best voice. I, don't, I, I can't give the best to you yes. when it comes to like the outward physical yes. or whatever. But Lord, I want to because you're so good. Right. And I remember right. hearing a story. I went to um, Calvary Chapel, Philadelphia a while back and uh the pastor there, Joe Foch, he was talking about how they have mics actually set up um, in their sanctuary, huge sanctuary. They have a lot wow. of people. And uh, and so the mics are set up so that, you know, the, the live stream can hear the church singing the along with voices. it, which is really cool. Right. And uh, people have actually complained because they have a deaf section. Oh. And the deaf section, yeah. you know, and, and I'm not yeah. trying to like be rude or anything like right. that, but they don't always have the best voices, you well, know, they right? Can't hear their own they can't hear their tunes yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, so some people have actually complained, which I think is messed up. And they right. said, we should turn them down. You know, we yeah. can. And he was like, I would never turn them down because yep. they're actually singing from yep. their hearts. It's not yeah. about like how yeah. they sound outwardly. It's like yeah. they're passionately worshiping Jesus. And it's the most yes. beautiful thing yes. that you can do. You know what I mean? I yeah. agree. And, and that's I what I would add. If worship is an offering, if it's a sacrifice, then what are you really offering? Is it the right. lyrics? Is it your voice? Or is it the heart? Right. Because that's what you're really offering. Like when you're praising and worshiping God, you're giving him glory from the heart, right? Yeah. You're praising his name. I love this verse in Hebrews 13. And it kind of ties these ideas of worship and sacrifice together. It says, therefore, by him, by the Lord, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Yeah. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's Hebrews 15, 13. So there's a piece of praise that is, of worship that is thanksgiving and yeah. praise. And so I, I love that, Brett. I would say to you, if you feel like, man, I don't have the greatest voice, praise the Lord, you're not offering your voice, you're offering your heart. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you get to bring yeah. that before the Lord. And that's why I love that the Bible never says you have to sing in key. It right. says, it says <laughs> right. sing with grace. And sometimes yeah. for some of us, the way we sing, we need grace, right? <laughs> when we sing, <laughs> we need lots of we grace. Need lots right. of grace. Right. So right. sing with grace and make a joyful noise unto yeah. the Lord. And you know what? I would even encourage yeah. you, maybe you're like, okay, I, I get that, but if you, I'm not going to go home and try singing in my bathroom, you know, and, and worship, I think worship can also be offering your heart in prayer. Yeah. yeah. Getting alone with the Lord yeah. and just praising him and extolling him and thanking yes. him and surrendering to him. That's just as much as worship as is singing corporately. I totally yeah. agree. Yep. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Brett, what's it like? <laughs> what is it like? Where's the crickets, Thomas? I know. We had a cricket <laughs> moment. It's, it's actually not awkward. Um, it just feels awkward when you're on the mic, but it's really not. When you watch the podcast later, it feels very natural, like the flow of conversation. It's true. It's just a yeah, I'm just not pod. used to If it. you think it's been awkward, comment in the comments below. It was, <laughs> it was awkward for Heather, and she does this a lot. So I was like, okay, it must be awkward if it's awkward. For it's awkward. <laughs> okay, but I do have a question for you. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So what is it like and what goes into preparing to lead worship for church? Do you know what I mean? Because what we see is you up front, but what do you do during the week <laughs> and how do you cultivate your own heart? Yeah, there's a lot of people in the body want to know how you're preparing too, Brett. <laughs> Why do you have to <laughs> ask kidding. me this question? <laughs> but what does that look like? I don't I mean, do anything. I just wing it. I get up there and I'm just like, guys, what songs are we singing today? <laughs> you know? You're like, what instrument do I feel like? Banjo? Let's get the banjo up here. Um, you know, it's something that I, it is a good question. <clears throat> and I want to be vulnerable 
with everyone in the world watching because we like all 50 states right watch this i'm pretty sure um but i i get convicted sometimes because i want to put more into um setting up for worship you know there i i do think through the songs but sometimes it can be more of a head thing where i think through like okay what songs have we done too much or yeah. what songs haven't we done for a while you right. know or or right. who who's playing this week so who can play like really good on this one song or you know right. i i think through that stuff but that's yeah. not heart stuff that's like just how can we make this sound decent yeah. right um but i do pray through things too and sometimes god really puts songs on my heart that i'm like man this really blesses me i hope this blesses the church and yeah. and actually on Tuesday night, not everyone knows this, but every other Tuesday night, um, the worship team meets yeah. together and we just we pray together. We love on each other. Actually, we've been writing songs, which has been awesome. And there's like yeah. what 15 um, people on the worship team, probably yeah, like 10 ish, maybe 10 wow. of us, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and everyone's been writing songs. It's been so good. But I love that. But we had a really good conversation the other Tuesday night just talking about um, what songs should we bring congregationally? And so right. that, that kind of goes into the planning because, you know, I do get emails from people that are like, hey, you should play this song or this song or this right. song. And and I and while I appreciate that, like, that's good yeah. to, to hear from other people. Yeah. But um, it's also hard to, like, sing a song when maybe it hasn't fully ministered to you personally. You know what right. I mean? Like, right. maybe that's really selfish to say. I hope not. But. But sometimes yeah. I have to think through, like, Lord, what are you doing in my heart? What do I feel like you're doing in the church? And yeah. um, and how can I minister to the church in the way that you're giving me songs? Yeah. And uh, and I, that is a great responsibility that I, I don't want to take lightly. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, I have to kind of work through that. Like, I don't want it to be a head thing where I'm just kind of getting going through the rhythm of okay i gotta pick songs this week like and the I organization the organization of it um because there's a practical element i mean Absolutely. you have yeah. five like this last sunday you had six musicians on stage yeah that's quite a bit and yeah. right. all those voices being synchronized and yeah all those instruments working well together and the musicians you had playing them and then you think of like the sound all the sound equipment and mics and sound check like there's a lot of practical things that probably goes into you right sunday morning worship but i love that your heart is it comes out of prayer it sounds like like you're yeah. praying and you're asking the lord like lord what do you what do you want us to sing right yeah. and honestly we do that with the sermon mm-hmm. you, know, you sit you down to. you study and there's practical things and you go through commentaries and you know the context but you're also asking lord what do you want to say to people when i and i think that's where some of the conviction comes in for me because it's like yeah. okay if if pastor mark pastor cody or putting this much effort into teaching and I do the same, you know, when I teach college group or whatever, I'm putting in hours of work to teach the Bible. Um, it's also important to put work into making sure that when we're leading worship, it's, mm-hmm. it's done well, you know, you don't want right. to have some things that are like sort of done well. And then like one thing that is like really important because Bible teaches, I love what you said, Heather, Bible teaching is so important because yes, the Lord does work in our hearts and the Holy Spirit convicts, um, but sometimes yeah. it's head knowledge, whereas worship is that like leaning towards the Lord and, and yeah. more of the heart to heart and uh, how important that is. You well, know, it's so church. personal. Mm-hmm. It is so personal. Absolutely. And that's why I love what you're saying, Brett. Worship needs to be intentional. Yeah. Whether we're doing it corporately, I think it needs to be done intentional and not just winging it, you know? Yeah. and. Yeah. I would even say like, even in our own lives, like spontaneous worship, that's different than winging it. Like, I think there's something beautiful about spontaneous worship where yeah, someone's heart is just overflowing and mm-hmm. overwhelmed and it wells up in song. You see that in the Bible. Like we were talking about uh, the song of Moses and Miriam yeah. and, you know, just welling yeah. up in their hearts with praise because of God's salvation. But I do think there needs to be a peace in our lives too, where worship is intentional. Yeah, You I know, agree. you yeah. said earlier that you've caught me jamming on the piano you know, here in the office in the morning. And uh, that's something I'm trying to do to be intentional about it. You know, can, how can I work worship into my daily routine? Right. And just yeah. be right. intentional with it because it's like devotions. Like if I'm not intentional about getting up early or whatever so I can read the Bible, yeah. I'm not going to read the Bible. Right. Because my day is going to start. I'm going to get busy. Things are going to go on. By the time the evening comes, I'm tired. Right. 
you know, I just want to relax or whatever. So I think worship's the same way. It's being intentional to mix in that routine, that rhythm. And, yeah. you know, if it's praying, can you go for a prayer walk and just be intentional? Like, I'm just going to praise God this afternoon for all the good things he's doing. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. And I like what you shared about the worship team getting together every other Tuesday. That's so fun. It is. And it shows that you're pouring into this group of people so that the worship we experience mm-hmm. is the overflow of that, right? It's yeah. the overflow. And if they're writing songs and all of that, I love that. I mean, I think that shows a just a deeper joy and honing their skill and their craft yeah. and um, a real avenue for expressing creativity. Yeah. I, it's that's seriously yeah. one of the highlights of my week. I, I love it. And yeah. For you viewers out there who go to our church yeah. in the next month or so, we're going to sing one. Are we? I was about yeah. to ask you that. When That's are we going to sing a song you guys are writing? I think, I think we're going to do one of Justin Turner's songs. Nice. Woo, woo. I love Justin. Yeah. I, love seeing him, yeah. I love seeing you raise him up. Yeah. yeah he's, he's, he's amazing. But I, ha- I have to brag yeah. on uh, Acacia. If you guys know Acacia, she sings and plays a guitar. But we all come Tuesday night. Yeah. Their homework was to write a song. And uh, we show up. She didn't have one. Which is, which is totally fine. Like I, t- I told them, yeah. you know, there's no pressure. It's just I wanted them to get into a, a place where when you do sit down to write a song, yeah. um, you do really press into the Lord because you're just like, Lord, please speak to me. Like, give yeah. me a song. And yeah. and usually um, those are the times that you just really have a sweet moment with the Lord. But anyway, so that's why I want them to get into a habit of it. But Acacia didn't have one. And uh, we're sitting there and we're all showing up. Um, some people just had lyrics, some people had melodies, you know, we're just showing each other our songs. And then out of nowhere, Keisha's like, Oh, I think I actually do have a song. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, Oh, I just, I think I just wrote one. And I'm thinking like just lyrics, you know, right. she just right. kind of jotted some things down, which would have been amazing too. Yeah. Um, but then she goes over to her guitar and gets it out and yeah. she's like playing softly as we're all still kind of talking. And then out of nowhere, she's like, yeah, I think I have one. I'm ready to share. Wow. And she plays like two verses and a chorus. And it was so good. Like it was really good. It was really spontaneous like the le- worship. Well, it was, but it was, I, I can't even explain yeah. it. Like, I, I think I recorded it actually. I'll have to show you guys, but it was just so good. So that kind of yeah. stuff is so fun. And even when you're talking about spontaneous worship, Thomas is actually here. Thomas, you can go. Hey. Hi. <laughs> uh, Thomas does our pro presenter in lyrics and I always kind of tell him is that for you? Yeah. <laughs> nice. if you turn up channel 4 we can actually hear you a little bit oh channel 4 hello testing are. testing oh here I am oh that's too loud Ooh, though too, too loud, loud. Yeah, too turn, loud. It, turn it down a little turn bit down. anyway say hi Thomas hello everybody okay now turn yourself off <laughs> um Oh my goodness. <laughs> so Thomas does our pro presenter and, and that's our lyrics and stuff yeah. on a Sunday morning. And um, I always kind of like, whenever it's just me playing guitar, I'm always like, all right, Thomas, get ready. Because I love spontaneous worship. I, yeah. I love, um, a lot of people don't, you know, because they don't know where I'm going and they don't want to yeah. know what I'm singing. Um, but I just, I love that I don't have to always be organized when I, when I play, when I play with a band, uh, you do have to be pretty organized because the band needs to know where you're going yeah. and, and what you're playing so that it sounds good, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think our band is getting good enough that we can be a little bit more spontaneous, which is a little yeah. really fun. Um, but when it's just me on guitar, I, I do feel like, yes, I'm leading and, and that's a responsibility of leading worship for the church. But I also just, I love to worship, you know? And, and so like when I'm up there and, and I'm just singing to the Lord, sometimes God yeah. just puts songs in my heart, you know, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, I just want to, I want to do that one. And, and I'm able to just kind of get into that. And, and it's just so much, so much fun. Yeah. And so I think that, um, God, you know, does that spontaneously in our lives. And just like you were saying, Cody, I think just being able to every single day, just sing to the Lord, like even spontaneously, you know, and yeah. just make melody to him and, and love him and um, rejoice and be thankful. So I think those are really good things for our walk, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. important for Christians to have worship as part of their daily rhythm yeah. with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Part of the rhythm. You know, it's, there's something powerful about worship even when it's, when times are hard. Yeah. I think of that song, Blessed Be Your Name. Yeah. 
take it from the story of Job. Yeah. Just you give and you take away. Yep. Blessed be your name. And yeah. there's something powerful about worship in the hard times that just it changes you and changes your heart. Right. And honestly, I think it beats the enemy back too. So like true. any power, it feels like he's trying to amass against us kind of crumbles when we, even when it's hard and we just go, Lord, I'm going to worship you. I love that song. This is how I fight my battles. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really say how you fight the battles. It just <laughs> says, this is how I fight my battles like six times over. I imagine though, every time I sing it, that it's with my hands yeah. open and i i think that song is probably taken from the story of jehoshaphat where they put the worshipers you guys know the story they're going to go to battle mm -hmm. and they ask god what they should do and god's like i'm just i'm going to go before you and you're going to get the victory yeah. so they put the young people who could worship in front of them yeah. and they marched to battle with people singing worship to the lord and when they got there god had already defeated their enemies right it's just so powerful something about worship yeah it is yeah i totally agree I think songs can be a refuge in times of crisis and pain too. I mean, that's a time of battle, but I think songs can be a time where you can hide yourself in the Lord and commune with him in a way that's different than just reading and doing devotions or just praying. Sometimes it allows you to express the depth of your, your feelings yeah. in a way yeah. that is just unique than to anything else. I think of, um, the hymn it is well with my soul mm. and just from what i understand it was written during a time of as a result of loss and in a time of crises and it just talks about that and it talks about in the midst of the in a sense the storm the sea billows that there's still that peace and that calm that only can come from god and so i think even the yeah. old hymns and things are such a rich testimony of god's faithfulness over the years and over the ages and so i do absolutely love the richness of that yeah I agree. And I think worship is just is so well displayed through Psalms. Yes. All the different moods David yes. was in. Yes. The highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, the sorrows, the rejoicing, yes. the pain, the praise. Like he was always there in worship. And yep. that's what I love about God. God is such a big God. He, is, yeah. he can pour it out on him. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I think, yeah. Um, you know, we know that music in general is powerful, yeah. but we know that God created God music and he created it because he knows how it just really pricks the heart you yeah. know and yeah. Yeah. Um, i was telling the worship team on tuesday night that there was one time um i've only had like two or three panic attacks in my life and i was in georgia and jill was gone she was on a trip and i had one and i was like yeah. i called her you know it's just really overwhelmed and fearful yeah. and uh and I just went, started playing piano and just singing to the Lord. And it was spontaneous singing songs I know. And yeah. the anxiety just left. You yeah. know, it was yeah. just so powerful because I, I yeah. it felt like David. That's why David just sang so much to the Lord, I think, because yeah. we know from the Psalms that he dealt extremely with depression, yeah. anxiety, you know, fear, like all of those things. And yeah. so how he knew how to fight that battle was to yeah. sing, you know what yeah. I mean? And, yeah. and, um, Man, it's just, it's such a gift it that is. the Lord has given us. Mm -hmm. I love that you brought that up, Brad. I can think yeah. of times when I've been discouraged or just been real dark. You ever feel like you can just feel like the enemy yeah. just got your number and it feels dark. And there's just something about cranking up the worship in that yep. time that changes everything, yeah. Yeah. changes the mood. I feel like it changes the sense of the room even. Yeah. I, I can think of n nights where I was maybe scared or worried and you just turn on over and flip on the worship music and yeah. it's just something about your soul that calms down. Yeah. I love yeah. that David always said about the Lord, he said, you are my strong tower, yes. yeah. like my city of refuge that I can run into yes. and hide and I'm safe there. Yes. And I feel like for me, worship is running to the strong tower. Yes. What is that? Is that Cass and Kranz? You are my strong tower. Or is that Cutlass? Tower. Fortress when is I'm it cutlass? weak. I think that's cutlass. No, maybe it's cutlass. Name is pure no, and holy. holy. Yeah, it's cutlass. <laughs> and your face is oh, I can just hear the electric guitar All sound right I now. Need. I need so that's good. So good. It's good, dude. We sounded good together. Cutlass, man. We should. <laughs> we should do a worship together. Yeah, we should do a band called Less Cut. <laughs> 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 not as cut. <laughs> oh my god! Not as cutting dude, edge. I forgot about Cutlass. Oh, dude, see so your faces. Good. See your faces. Um, oh. Holy of Holies by Cutlass. Holy of Holies. Yeah. So good. Take me in. Yeah. Oh, they're from Albany, a, yeah. Oregon. They are. 
Those guys. Actually, Albany, Oregon. Kyle Mitchell, their is he here, their drummer or their guitar player? He is the pastor of Calvary Chapel Deaver Connor outside Albany, Oregon, right now. Really? Huh. He's their senior pastor. Interesting. Yeah. Fun story. This has nothing I hope to do you're with listening, the podcast. Bro. Hope you're listening, Kyle, because that's a shout out. But uh, we can tag him. He came to the former church I was at right after he got hired as a senior pastor, and our, he was introducing himself to the staff. And this is a large staff, and everyone's going around the room. And I got around to my spot, and I said, "Hey, my name's Cody Smith." And he goes, "Yeah, I know you." And I said, "You know me?" <laughs> and he goes, "Yeah, I DJ'd for your wedding." Oh, for real? Oh, how funny. I had the... <laughs> what a cut list of original <laughs> band members DJ for my... I was like, what? So what happened is the guy who was doing sound, uh, I don't I don't know if he fell through or something was going on, so he called it's his funny. friend to step in and come fill it, and it was Kyle Mitchell, and that's he showed funny. up at my wedding oh, and did the funny. music. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> that is really funny. funny. I, I know. Cutlet. I was like, how come we didn't play more Cutlass songs on the dance floor? <laughs> I would have loved that. <laughs> You're dancing to You Are My Strong <laughs> Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Your first dance. Our first dance, dude, would have been so romantic. So good. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's funny. Anyways, fun story about that. That, that is, is funny. a good story. That is a good story. I think it's funny that he knew you and you didn't know him. Yeah, so I mean, like, funny. and then you're like, I just feel special. Sure. Yeah, it just felt funny. Yeah, I'm sure that you, yeah. <laughs> Cutlass, I wish Cutlass knew me, but that's okay. Kyle, this is Pastor Brett. He's our worship pastor. If you're listening to this, <laughs> I don't know what camera to look at. <laughs> so fun, so fun. Oh man, music is fun. It is fun. is fun, and worship, worship is powerful because it changes us. Now, I said yeah. at the very beginning that worship isn't for us, and I meant it. Yeah. But in the end, worship does something for you and yeah. I. Absolutely. It's that point of surrender. True. It's that point of adoration to the Lord. Yeah. Um, it is that point of vulnerability that I feel like God yeah. breaks through in our hearts. Yeah. Well, and like for someone like me who isn't able to really carry a tune, it's something you offer to the Lord and he makes it beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's nothing of me. It's like the boy with the loaves and the fishes who came and were like, God, I have this, right? Yeah. And it wasn't adequate. And yet in the hands of Jesus, it became adequate. And so yeah. I think that's something is that when we sing, when we offer it, it isn't about our own adequacy. It's about offering to God something and he transforms it and makes it beautiful. And it's not anything really that I have to contribute except being there and showing up and I guess being willing. Yeah. Reminds me of another song. You make everything beautiful. <laughs> but ding, 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 ding. Is that Cutlass too? I don't think so. I don't know who that is. Maybe it is. But anyway, like when you said he know. makes it beautiful, yeah, I was like, that's exactly Think. it. I need, I need to do that song. He does. No. <laughs> beautiful. There's some songs <laughs> Brett and I have on our band <laughs> list. They're great Christian songs. That's one of them. Add it to the band list. But not not like band. Like our like I band. You like meant we band. can't. No, no, no. Like we like don't band, sing it. Not gonna happen. We have a band list. <laughs> where it's there's a great Christian song. It's just not great worship. I love that Cody won't let me do. Springtime. Nope, don't even bring it up on the podcast. Yeah, I'm curious All about right. it. You don't want to hear it. Hey, you do. It's so good. No, you don't. Nobody wants to hear springtime. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> when we get to have it, I don't think anyone's going to be singing I springtime. I guarantee you that's all we're going to be singing. No, no. Um, <laughs> now you just got me worked up and frustrated. Can I read a verse? Okay, sure. Because you miss, mentioned a pat. Oh, my gosh. You mentioned a, a passage pat. of... of <laughs> Back, a passage of scripture, okay. and I haven't actually given one, but I think my absolute favorite is John chapter four. Yeah, um, because he's talking to the woman at the well. We all know the story, you know, yeah. Samaritan, and uh, life is a wreck, and uh, they get to a place of of yeah. Jesus is is talking to her about living water and that he can give that living water, yeah. where well, she'll never thirst again. But then he gets, you know, that she kind of like. De debates a little bit as far as like where where do we worship you know the samaritans think we worship here on this mountain that you know israel jews um or in jerusalem they they believe on this mountain we're supposed to worship but i just love yeah. the the response that jesus um gives to her where he says women believe me the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in jerusalem worship the father you worship what you do not know we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And then I love this, this is my favorite for the Father 
in, um, sorry, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. For God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And and the reason I bring that up, I, I don't think it's like, you know, the, um, the very pinnacle of like when you're teaching on worship, but it wrecked me when I was a kid. And yeah. I, was, I, I think I, the very first time I taught the Bible was actually on worship and I was 17 years old, I think. And I, and I came to this passage and it just wrecked me because I'm like, Lord, if you're seeking people who are going to worship you in spirit and in truth, yeah. is that me? Right. You know what I mean? Like, do I worship you in yeah. spirit and in truth where it's, you know, it's yeah. doctrinally sound and the things that I sing and the songs that I'm giving yeah. to you, but is it, is it spirit filled? Is it, you know, am I, yeah. am I wanting your spirit to like fill me and, and overwhelm me, Lord? Is it, you know, am I feeling, you know, they're, they're wrestling with, is God going to hear us on this mountain or that mountain? And sometimes we wrestle with, okay, is God going to hear me only in the church? But it's like, no, he's, he's seeking those who are just wanting to worship him 24, like it, always, you know, yeah. in every yeah. avenue of your life, like worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. And, and I just think that's so powerful. I think that changed her completely too, you know? Yeah. 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 I'm so glad you brought that up, Brett. Uh, um, I want to read a passage to you. This is probably one of my favorite scriptures on worship. It's a little bit lengthy of a passage, so I apologize. It's a good one. But it's Revelation 4. And it is, I think, one of the greatest Mm -hmm. texts in the Bible. This text inspires me. I mean, just inspires me so much. I used to read to my junior high kids years ago from chapters like this in the Bible where you see God and you see his holiness, and it just inspires that kind of praise and worship and adoration that God deserves when you kind of— catch a glimpse of the vision of him but this is what it says after these things i looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which i heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying come up here and i will show you things which must take place after this immediately i was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne an appearance like an emerald Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. And the first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. And what I love about this image of heaven is just the intensity and the majesty of the Lord sitting on his throne and his magnificence that fills the temple isaiah said it's like smoke like a cloud of smoke that fills the temple and lightning and thunder proceeding from him and voices and the sea of glass and the rainbow and the color and these angels that just are flying around him shouting out his holiness and as they shout out how holy he is these kings and their elders sitting on these thrones they fall on their face before him proskuneo prostrate that's probably i mean i don't know if that's the word there but i would assume that's the imagery of it and they worship him and cast their crowns and as the angels say you're holy they cry out to him that lord you are worthy and i've always believed that when you and i worship here on this earth we're joining in that scene in heaven absolutely that's what's going on constantly around god's throne is this worship when you and i pause and i think that's why it's so powerful for us because when we pause to worship him it's almost like we're caught up there and we're in the yeah. throne and we're just glorifying yeah. him because it's the occupation of heaven yeah. is to so worship beautiful. God. Yeah. Such a beautiful passage. Yeah. It's amazing. It gives you chills almost. It, it does. does. It's consuming. Like when you read it, it's just like, it's such a consuming image. Oh yeah. And, and you hear a lot of 
people complain, you know, where they, they say, man, is it really going to just be singing in heaven? And I, and I think the response is like, man, you won't want to stop. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, you know, when you have passages like that and you yeah. just, you think about the beauty of the Lord and just how, mm. man, radiant he is. And, and John is just like penning what he sees in this vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's probably not even, doesn't even compare to what we're going to see in, in actually, you know, experience. Oh yeah. And we just won't want to quit worshiping the Lord. It's just yeah. going to be part of, yeah, it's just going to be part of what we want. Well, yeah. will we sing the whole time? Probably I don't not. think so. No. But will we praise him the whole time? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's yeah. where praise is more. And you, yeah. you read the book of Revelation and it's constant praise, the way the angels yeah. Yeah. and the people speak to God. It's honoring to him. Well, you know what podcast I would do with y'all is heaven. Heaven yeah. would be so fun. Podcast on heaven. Yeah. Heather wants really us to read good. the book by Randy Alcorn. Oh, yeah. But it is huge. It is. I don't that's read really fast good. enough. I would like to. We need it. a year to prepare for it. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's a side note. Yeah. Oh, Revelation 4 is so good. Yeah, it's incredible. Heather, Brett, you guys got closing thoughts for our podcast on worship? I don't think I do because that passage in Revelation was, is just like the exclamation point. I was going to say the exact same. It's same the thing. capstone, like isn't it? Yeah. It just feels like I'm glad it you, is. I'm glad you ended with it because we, we did I'm a too. podcast a while ago, a months ago. And we started with it, which was good, but it was just like, man, it's so good to end with. Yeah, yeah this you know, is Worship like, Podcast Part 2, because we tried yeah. that one. We were like, you know what? It just doesn't fit. And it didn't, yeah. yeah. I hope this one fits. I hope this one fits. And it's yeah. it really is the capstone, because at the end of it all, at the center of our worship is a living being. Right. Right. You right. know, we think of standing in the sanctuary and looking at the screen, and we forget that at the center of our worship is a living being who inhabits the praises of his people. That's right. yes. I, I've always found it so powerful that it's when we worship so often that God's spirit falls upon us. Yes. Have you just been in the room worshiping yep. and you feel the spirit of God settling like the cloud on the temple? Yes. Yeah. Oh man, that's yes. my heart for our church that we would be yes. worshipers and in that we would experience yeah. the living Jesus because that's who we are worshiping. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. You know what our next podcast we're going to do on, on a worship-related one is the presence of God. I, I love Exodus when the yeah. cloud settled yes. and people yes. couldn't even worship. They couldn't do anything because yes. the presence of God was so thick in their yeah, midst. That's cool. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Coming soon, the presence of God. There's a lot of good ones. A out. lot of good ones coming down the yeah. pipeline. We're doing a actually. live podcast. Oh, we are doing a live podcast. Yeah. That's uh, June 23rd. Yeah, it's a correct? Thursday night at 7 p.m. Yeah, 24th? Thursday night. I think it's the 24th. It's the 24th, 24th maybe. maybe. Open up the calendar. But the it is calendar. a Thursday night. Yeah, 24th. 7 p.m. Yep. The 24th. It's going to be so much fun. What we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to... Cody is now our senior pastor here at Ashland Christian Fellowship, right. which we're super excited about. Super, super excited. excited. And uh, we're going to basically devote the whole time uh, not praising Cody or lifting him up, but asking him questions. Like if you've ever wanted to know more about Pastor yeah. Cody, who he is, maybe his upbringing, uh, what kind of a kid he was, it would be so fun to like yeah. have his parents call in and <laughs> tell stories about him. And you stuff can like totally, that. they would totally oh, do it. I'm definitely going to have them. But That's because of our idea. new equipment, uh, you can call in that night and yeah. actually like be, be on the podcast with your voice, yeah. um, which I think would be really cool. You can cool. still text in and message in. Yeah, you can message all that. So I'm a little, I'm a little nervous yeah. for this, but I know there's people who want to know more about me and my yeah. story. Some of them heard some of the stories uh, yeah. from Rick while he was sharing. I want to hear like, about your time in Brazil. Yeah, people want to hear more yeah. about yeah. that. So I, really I think really it's going to I want to hear about your um, awesome high school pastor you had. Yeah, Roy Rogers was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the second one I had, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was good. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Brett was actually my high school pastor for a season way back in the day, so I'm yeah. honored that you're here working with me, man. Dude, I'm honored. Guys, that's all we got time for, but we cannot wait to bring more podcasts yeah. to you. Stay tuned because we got some great topics coming Gosh. this summer. And uh, put that down your calendar, June 24th. 24th. Yes. 7 p.m. Yes. Live podcast. You don't want to miss it. God bless you guys. We'll catch you then.